Hello and welcome to this episode of the DPC Fuji Learning Experience. Today we're going to be covering the drive dial and shooting settings. Let's jump into it. So this time around I will be covering the drive modes and drive dial on the Fuji X-T2. And again it is very simple to access the various drive modes by just using the drive dial which is just below the ISO dial. And as you can see, we have all these options from shooting video to bracketing to continuous high speed, continuous low speed, single shot, and then your uh, um, double exposures, meaning that you can take two exposures and the camera will overlay the one exposure on top of the other. And then advanced filter mode, uh, which we will discuss a bit later on, and then also the ability to shoot panoramic images. So uh, I'm just going to start talking about bracketing. Now the Fuji allows you to, to bracket various uh, type of settings including auto exposure bracketing meaning that you can make different exposures uh, and then overlay the exposures in editing to create an HDR image or maybe just choose the best one uh, to use. Uh, you can also bracket the white balance, you can also bracket the ISO and you can also bracket the various uh, film simulations that the Fuji cameras has on offer. So to get into the bracket perimeter and set up my uh, uh, bracketing beforehand, I'm just going to press the menu button in the back and uh, I'm going straight down to the shooting setting, uh, which is the camera icon. And then by using the right selector, uh, I will simply go into drive setting and pressing the right selector, as you can see that I have uh, uh, the, the, the bracketing setting selected and again pressing the right selector I go in there and then this will allow me to choose what type of bracketing I would like to do so pressing the right selector again as you can see you have the options of auto exposure bracketing ISO bracketing form simulation bracketing white balance bracket bracketing and then dynamic range bracketing personally um, I would only use the auto exposure bracketing if I am shooting and um, I would just quickly want to talk you through it. Uh, in this case as you can see that I've selected uh, two stops uh, auto exposure bracketing meaning that the camera that you will have to take three pictures uh, a bright picture and a dark picture and a medium picture and then uh, overlay the pictures afterwards or you would simply be able to choose the best one of the lot. So switching to continuous high speed on the X-T2 is as simple as moving to CH on the drive dial uh, and this means that the camera would be able now to capture up to 8 frames per second in high speed burst mode which is incredibly fast for a camera this size. Now adding a battery grip allows you to take up to 11 frames per second in boost mode using the mechanical shutter and up to 14 frames per second using the electronic shutter. So the next setting is the continuous low burst mode, meaning that you can choose to shoot either 3, 4 or 5 frames per second and you can set the amount of pictures the camera would take when pressing and holding in the shutter button by going back into the shooting menu. Again, it's the camera icon and use my right selector to get in there and go into drive setting. And there you will have options to choose uh, the burst mode of continuous high and continuous low settings. And in this case, um, I might want to select three, fr three frames per second. So the next mode is single frame where uh, the camera will only take one photo when you press and hold in the shutter button. Now this will typically be the best when working in studio where you have to wait for your studio lights to recycle. So the next setting is double exposures, meaning that uh, you would be able to take two exposures one after the other and the camera will simply overlay the exposures and this will typically be used by fine art photographers or for creative effects. So 
The next drive mode is the advanced filter mode, which is really for creative effects. I personally don't use this at all, but it's just interesting and I, I want to show it to you. And I'm just going to go into the menu. And again, going down to the shooting menu and uh, to the drive setting using my right selector. And then I'm going to browse down towards advanced filter settings. And then again, pressing my right selector um, will reveal all the uh, advanced filter options. So you have a toy, camera, miniature, pop color, high key, low key, dynamic tone, soft focus, partial color, red, partial color, orange, yellow color, green, blue, and purple. These are really fun to play with, but um, I personally wouldn't use it in my own photography. So the final drive mode is a panoramic mode that will allow you to shoot handheld panoramas or using a tripod and um, the Fuji really makes it simple because it does give you this yellow line in the middle that indicates uh, your, your center horizon line and then also with an arrow indicate the direction you should shoot into. I shot quite a few panoramics with the X-T2 and I was really impressed with the accuracy and with the fact that almost every time I was able to put these images together in Lightroom and Photoshop for perfect panoramas. I'm Aaron James, Fuji X Photographer. Thank you for watching this DPC Fuji learning experience. For more information on courses, visit dpc.co.za. I'd love to connect with you. Visit warrenjames.co.za. Thank you to Photon Lighting and Vanguard for supplying us the kit for this shoot. See you later.